Hey guys, Sandy here and welcome to Follow a Sketch Friday for Freaky Friday the 13th of March. Today I'm going to be scrapbooking uh, these two photos. Um, one is of a Lego set that was in the process of being put together and one is the Lego set that I received for my birthday last year. I am going to be using this sketch right here and this is on the Redefined Creative uh, and the Secret Not Secret Kit Club public page on Facebook. It is a sketch by Laura Whitaker. So let's see what I can do. Okay, let's try this again. This is only the third time I'm trying to record this video. Uh, the first time the family was a little a bit of a loudness mess in the other room. The second time it just didn't record. So third time's the charm, hopefully, guys. Now I am going to go ahead and use a bunch of Chamel pattern papers for this layout. This background paper that I have uh, with the little circles on that I'm placing the white cardstock on top of, that is from Little by Little. It's from the paper pad. I picked that up at Joann's. Um, I don't believe I had the paper in the individual sheets when it came out. I didn't get a lot of Little by Little um, just because it felt so little kiddish and I don't have little kids and um, hopefully won't have little kids for a while. <laughs> um, we're thinking of grand grandchildren here, like down the road, down the road. Um, I could pull out, I guess I could have pulled out older, older photos of the kids that haven't been scrapped and used it, but I just didn't. Um, but that's okay. That's okay. So I liked the little pops of color peeking out from behind the white cardstock. I decided to go with the white cardstock because I was going to be doing some of the mixed media elements on uh, the sketch. Uh, the first thing I do is grab this Brutus Monroe stencil. Um, let me see if it has the name on it. Oops, let's pull this around. It does not, um, but what I will do is leave a link down below in case you're interested in it. Of course, it will be an affiliate link because you know my design team dream has been realized and I am on the Brutus Monroe <laughs> inspiration team. I'll probably be throwing that a lot. Um, out there at you guys just because I'm so excited about it like I am ridiculously excited about it so there is that now I am taking one of my ink blending tools and I pulled off one of the ink uh, sponge little tippy things uh, and I don't add any ink to it I'm just using the ink that's just kind of chilling out in the sponge dauber just to add a little touch um, of this kind of stencil design there uh, and then I decide, you know, I'm like, do I want to add in this mixed media? And I'm thinking about it and ultimately I do. So I grab an acrylic block. Now this is a super, super easy way to add some splotches to your page. Uh, not splatters, but splotches. So you take your um, color medium of choice, you put it on your acrylic block, and then you squirt some water on top of it and it kind of spreads it out a little bit. Then you uh, take your acrylic block and basically you're kissing the acrylic block to the paper and then ultimately you just push it all the way down and smush it. So it does give you the big smushy, um, kind of like watercolory looking splatter bits uh, that were on the sketch. So ultimately I'm happy with it. I got two different shades of green going on there. Um, one is more of a teal and one is definitely more of a like a yellow green. And that completely works for me because of the papers that I'm using. They have multiple shades of green in it. So even if the greens don't exactly match, there is enough where I have so many different varieties of green that it's not it's not competing like your eye and your brain are not trying to make sense of it all because it's it all just makes sense. Um, I do cut out some of these wonky circles and I have to say wonky circles are probably a great thing uh, to start fussy cutting practice on um, you because you don't have to put it into a beautiful perfect circle and if it's a little bit wonky um, like this one is down here uh, because when I was cutting out the circle out of the paper, I accidentally nicked into the wonky circle itself. 
Like it doesn't matter because they're wonky circles. Like they're supposed to be wonky. And how many different times can I say wonky in one breath? <laughs> Apparently a whole bunch. Now I was going to do a cluster of these circles over here instead of a tag. Um, because really the only tags that I have pre-made right now um, are some white ones that are larger and also uh, some of these like little pink jobbies that ultimately didn't work. Now I was thinking that this uh, black kind of uh, book book plate label was going to be my label in the sketch, but ultimately I decided to go with the LA Studio labels. I'm pretty sure these are LA Studio. Um, I did the black one and then I also cut out this purple one. And again, this purple is not an exact match to the purples that are in the pattern paper, but since there are so many varying shades, um, it works. Okay, like you, you aren't looking at it and being confused by this either. It just works. So I layered up a circle on top of that. There's that white pre-made tag that I was telling you about and ultimately new. Um, the white on white is a look that I do like, but not for this layout. And then that was the little pink uh, tag jobby that I decided really didn't go with it either. Um, so I take a look at the sketch one more time and I'm like, what am I doing? What am I doing? So I'm like, I do, I do need a tag. I need a tag here um, because there's not a lot going to be going on with this layout. Um, like I said, I just needed something quick and easy um, to de-stress a little bit. So I do find this uh, sliver of pattern paper that big surprise came from Chamel's field trip. And I just mark off uh, some little spots on it, on the um, card here, so that I could make it into a tag. And I just adhere that down, and then I'm going to adhere down these little uh, circles as well after I figure out where exactly I want them to go. I decide that I want two on top of the tag and kind of one hanging out underneath of the tag. Um, and then I realized I didn't cut out my wonky circle completely, so I went ahead and took care of that. So we've got these circles down. Um, now the only thing we need to do is put something uh, on the tag. Um, I almost said fill the tag hole, but I don't even punch the hole. So, you know. Now, at first I had pulled out the white and blue twine, but I was like, no, I have too many pops of black. I need to pull out the black and white twine. And then I fiddled around with the idea of putting the bow um, straight up, but no, the bow needed to go on top of the tag like this. And I just used half of a glue dot um, because I had uh, cut the glue dot in half uh, I don't know, yesterday or maybe the day before for a layout. So that little piece was there. And then I decide to place my title right on top of the circles and the tag right on top and my titles right on. I oh, couldn't, couldn't do that if you tried. Now you might be thinking, what in the world are you doing a right on title for when you have um, Disney Legos? But to me, it makes sense in my head. Because, you know, you're like, I got Legos for my birthday. Right on. And and I know that sounds like super justifying it, but in my head it works. So that's what we're going with. And it is a pre-made title and it's quick and easy. And like I said, needed a quick and easy de-stressful layout today. So I lay on those Ellie Studio black uh, enamel dots. I'm writing Lego birthday and adding the date. Then I grab one more thing of um, mixed media one more little spray here and it's from little birdie and it's another shade of green so i splatter that around wipe off the mat real quick uh you know because i left the splatters on the photos uh and that's going to do it guys thanks so much for watching i'll see you again real soon